Hello and welcome to Are You Not Entertained? I'm Daniel. I'm Rachel. And I'm James. And we're continuing our coverage of the new HBO Perry Mason series with episode seven, also called chapter seven. Uh, obviously getting much, we're getting a lot closer to the end. There's only one episode left, but uh, getting a lot more details. Yeah, a lot happened in this episode. It was definitely eventful. Um, while I like the individual episode, I am a little disappointed because we didn't get a whole lot of courtroom drama. So, But what we did get was very good. Yes, exactly. You got to see Perry really kind of come into his own. Yeah, there's a lot more action and detail in this. I think there's a lot of additional storylines. You had some ideas maybe that it didn't happen as simply as you might have been led to think that, you know, Ennis just set this whole thing up and took it out. Yeah. So now we're getting some extra pieces. Yeah, I was right. Baggerly is the uh, is the through line in all of it. I had a feeling from the beginning. He he is, but I thought he would uh, have a little bit more to do with the dirty side of it, which he, oh, doesn't, okay. he doesn't seem to be at this point. Unless they really throw in something at the the end of next episode. No, but I mean, that also makes sense. He's the money. He's not the muscle. Yeah, I was just wondering if he was, you know, kind of pulling some strings in order to make some of his business dealings work. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, they kind of alluded to that, that that's the, that's the solution is that because of the debt they were in, that they were trying to pull off the ransom to pay that off. Yeah. But what did you mean? Not. Yeah. So I mean like Herman Baggerly was trying to, do something underhand. I mean, it would basically be like an insurance scheme essentially in mm, order to pay off okay. some, but that's not yeah. like, that's not how this is going. Um, he was being, he was being scammed, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is basically what that means. Right. Uh, what we found out in court is essentially, you know, the books were being cooked and, um, Bagley said he's not giving up any more of his money uh, because he's really not gotten anything out of it. And uh, it the seems, higher ups in the church ended up. Yeah, it seems mm, like the the yeah. book the the bookkeeper, <laughs> the head finance guy, uh, decided to to do some crooked stuff in order to keep up with the debts that they're that are piling up at their door. Yep. And it all went downhill. Yeah. Yeah. And we had the teaser of, uh, going to Colorado and figuring out how it all sort of ties together, but we haven't seen Perry utilize that yet. Right. Yeah. We haven't gotten there. So I'm sure that'll show up next episode, final episode, but it, it was really nice to see Drake take a much larger role in this. Yeah, absolutely. That was maybe my favorite part of the entire episode when Drake and Perry were in the car before they uh, went into the masseuse parlor. Um, just the the conversation between them of how I operate, I thought was excellent because <laughs> it was because Drake is maybe my favorite character in in the show outside of Perry. Um, yeah. EB was pretty close, but I think I like Drake a little bit more. And the fact that even when he's stepping outside of his normal day job, he's still got his sense of ethics that are uncorruptible. Well, I don't know. After the way things went down, I wasn't sure exactly what he meant by tell me how you do your, what your way is again. But I don't know. I, I like the fact that he was unmoved by Perry's uh, attempt to try to get him to bend the rules. No, and I thought that was a pretty snappy sort of line to deliver after he basically saves Perry from getting his ass handed to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell me getting, again how you operate. Okay. Beat with oh, a chain. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Okay, I get that. Yeah, and I guess kind of tying into that, it was 
it's, it's unfortunate to see Strickland go away. Um, I thought it was going to be in a more, um, I don't know, with more fireworks, I guess. I thought maybe Ennis would like notice him following him and take him out or something like that, or, you know, some, something of that manner, as opposed to him just getting tired of, of taking Perry's crap, which is kind of, kind of how it went. (laughs) Yeah. Perry was really taking a lot of stuff out on him that, you know, he, he didn't fulfill his job perfectly, but he didn't deserve that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, It's, it's not his fault that the guy pulled him, the old switcheroo on him. Right. Um, and that's, I mean, he just, he kind of just stepped away. He's, he's done and enter Paul Drake, which is, which is great. I like Drake. Um, I really like Strickland as well too, though. So I did too. Um, Definitely a little sad. It's a to wash. See Strickland go. <laughs> it's a wash. Sad <laughs> to see Strickland go. Good to see Drake. Speaking of uh, of Strickland, though, the part where he comes back from Colorado finally, and they have the conversation yeah. in the bathroom, and I, I absolutely loved it when Perry responds with giving him the bird when he says he almost looked like yeah. a lawyer up there today. <laughs> yeah. That was so great. That was that's the great. kind of interaction I'm going to miss between the between the. I Hopefully think that, he comes back. That's another thing, though. They didn't kill him off or anything. No, There's he's plenty not. Of opportunity for him to return. He's not dead or anything, but I do kind of also understand why he might be taking more of a, a backseat role because he's used to Perry Mason, private eye, drunken, debaucherous Perry Mason, uh, you know, not really dealing with his issues where we kind of have a new Perry Mason coming out. Yeah, they both lived on the edge, and Perry's kind of having to pull himself together and not be the friend that Pete has known for a long time. Yeah. Well, and, you know, a lot more pressure is there because he is, as he says, literally fighting for someone's life. Right. Uh, He's not trying to take, you know, nudie photos of a movie star doing the bad. Um, he is he is in court trying to save someone, and so, you know, I can see how that might weigh heavily. Yeah, and I think it's just another development to see Perry finally lose his house. Oh, I that's think. another line. Yeah, he put a lot of like personality behind still living there. Yeah. So to have to confront those issues and possibly, oh, I don't know, grow up or move on, I think it'll be interesting. (laughs) I did also like the the comparison that they did there. You know, I've got, you know, my dad left these, this 10 acres of land for me Mm. to, you know, to take care of. And, and Drake's like, yeah, my daddy had some overalls and a, what was it? It was like a, a bond. A bond. Yeah. That yeah. he split with his brother. And you're like, ah, well, okay. And don't tell me all about what you have left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it is interesting because she has been saying throughout the whole show, I'm going to buy your house. She has been. I think he just didn't expect it to happen this particular way. Right. But she's been very upfront, very transparent about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes and no. She's yeah, known, I mean, obviously, for a while that there was a way for her to buy it without actually going through Perry. Yeah, she was just trying to see if she could get Perry to sell her the house before she took it away from him. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of sucks to see that rift between them, but at the same time, it might be the impetus for Perry to turn into the Perry Mason we know from the original show. Right. Uh, well, stand a reason. one thing I've got to say is I really hope that we finally get an episode that is three quarters courtroom next time. Um, I don't I've know. enjoyed this the entire time. I've had a good time with the show and I think it's a really entertaining season so far. But uh, the whole calling it Perry Mason is the weird part to me still. It, it doesn't have any of the ringbacks that I felt bef- from 
the original television show. And, you know, I'm not a Perry Mason expert, but I saw it on reruns a ton of times when I was younger. Sure. So I have an, a, at least a gross understanding of how the, the tropes of Perry Mason. And I just haven't felt it here. Um, that being said, it's highly entertaining and I don't regret watching it. It's just confusing. Yeah. I think that, I think I'm there with you. I mean, it's, that's kind of been my, my thing the whole time. It's starting to make a little more sense as Perry Mason now, just because of the characters that they have and that they're pulling into it. And Um, I like the way that they're, that the characters are fleshing out, but yeah, yeah, I think and this a, is a horse we've beat quite a few times. So Yeah, exactly. Every I'm, episode. I'm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am curious about the courtroom thing though. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know that they're gonna be able to pull off that much in the courtroom. I mean there's mm-hmm. there's obviously gotta be so, a lot going on in order to get the hopefully get the like the confession, right? That's but what we you still want. have Sister Alice to deal with as well. Exactly. Which is not really going to happen in the courtroom. And that's right. that's what I'm curious about. We have Sister Alice to deal with, but we still have Ennis. Because he keeps talking about wanting to get Ennis on the stand so he can break him. And I'm I'm curious if that's going to be the big Perry Mason yeah. banner it moment. It has to be. It uh, has yeah. to be. Ennis yeah. has to be the one who breaks on the stand and just like screams the truth at Perry and breaks the entire case wide open. Yeah. Yeah. We just got to figure out the pesky vanishing baby. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of questions to be answered. So hopefully we'll get a nice clean wrap up next time. And, you know, maybe some heavy courtroom drama. I'd appreciate Single it. Single episode left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One episode left. And I am really looking forward to it. Uh, I do hope, I hope you're right. I hope we get a little more, uh, courtroom than we have in the the last few. Well, I guess this one was just a little lighter on the courtroom than I was expecting, but the previous episode had, had a decent amount of courtroom in it. Right. Sure. Yeah. Last episode was great. And I was hoping for at least that much here, but we didn't quite get that. Yeah. Well, they have, they had a lot. We had a lot of character a lot building. To tie and, up. Yeah. Right. Loose ends that needed to be stabbed to death. All right. Well, then let's. I guess we'll get that covered next time. Anything else y'all want to make sure we hit on before we get off? No, I think that covers it. All right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, please go online, like, and subscribe, and join us next time on Were You Not Entertained?